watch this full series at the links in the description below and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. In 2011, Ginger was at a mental health standstill. She was self-medicating with wine nearly every day to cope with her depression. She was barely getting by. Right before Ginger started her new job as a weekend meteorologist at Good Morning America, she committed herself to a psychiatric hospital for seven days. She says that stay was life-changing and absolutely vital to her successful trajectory toward mental wellness. In, in your book on page 160, mm -hmm. you talk about who, you talk about writing about your psychiatric stay mm -hmm. and how there was a part of you that felt like people are gonna think this is gonna be a sign of weakness, but you hoped that it would be a sign of bravery. Yeah. I have talked to people who've gone to a psychiatric hospital who share those same feelings mm -hmm. where I only view it as bravery yeah. because if you go to the doctor to fix your broken leg, I'm like, good for you. Mm -hmm. You needed to fix your broken leg. Why would people view you getting help in a psych hospital for your brain as weakness? Yeah. And that's, I think, where we were talking about the awareness of therapy I don't think is so mystifying anymore. I mm. think a lot of people are very like, Therapy's therapy. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes to therapy. Oh, my therapist, my this. It's all part of our normal culture. You do not hear people saying, I checked myself into an institute or mm -hmm. a, a hospital or whatever it was, the psych ward. Uh, because there's a giant, I think, there is still a big problem with thinking that they are, and some of them are, the one I went to is very much like mm -hmm. one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge stigma with them. And I think that's my big question to myself all the time is, say drugs and alcohol. I think it's almost sexy to go to rehab. I did a stint at rehab, oh good for you, you're, you're helping yourself. Mm -hmm. There's only positive, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know anybody who would say anything else. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're there and I would like that us for us to be there. Yeah, in, in a so I guess psych wards are just the rehab of mental health. That's what they are, and, but but doesn't have to come from drugs and alcohol. Right. Your, your issues, which are the treated Similarly, in a lot of ways, you know, addiction to chaos is mm -hmm. an addiction to something. Um, and then often do have prescription things or whatever to them. This needs, I don't think that we need to have the place in Malibu because I think that the, part of why it worked was it scared me. Mm. And so I do think that that's important. But I don't, I do think they could be a little softer. <laughs> I think that, mm -hmm. it, you know, yes, you need to be stripped of your you know, everything so that you don't hang yourself in your room. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of actual medical reasons for a lot of these things. But I think being able to say, I'm so not well that not only am I going to go get this cast, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in traction for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how broken my leg is. Mm -hmm. That's where the difference needs to come. And so being open and having people not feel like three days of time off if you broke your leg would be very different if your coworker went for three days to a psych hospital. You're right. And that's where I think we could, we could really make some progress in the actionable part is just saying, yeah, that's what we should do. Because guess what? In, in one hour, a therapist can't get deep enough. No. In three days, seven days, two weeks, you have the opportunity to dive deep, deep, deep and get to the, the base or the core. You have time to find the right therapist within that network. Mm -hmm. There's all of the things and you're finally paying attention and giving it the time and necessity that it deserves. What led you up to walking through those doors into the psych ward? It was the abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. I was I was either going to kill myself or let him kill me. I mean, that's where I was. And, and I knew that I'd gotten so dark again. Um, even with this bright, bright job ahead of me and all these great things about to happen, that transition plus the abuse was, I knew I didn't want to die for the first time too, because otherwise I would have just tried to kill myself again. You knew you didn't want to die for yeah, the first time. for the first time. Because mostly, and I talk about this with my therapist now a lot, is that I have had a couple of times in the last eight years since, this, uh, since I went to the hospital where I've woken up with that feeling of lost don't know how this is gonna go. My initial reaction is always tell somebody because that usually wards off a huge, you know, because if I keep it to myself, that's where it's gonna go deeper and darker. So I usually wake up, I would tell my husband, and I've done this a couple of times in our marriage. I'm like, having one of those days. I, nothing matters. I need to say this out loud. I tell him. I usually call my mom and tell her. So mm -hmm. it starts like that. Um, this has helped me then to, to and it doesn't mean that it's gonna solve it. it. Doesn't mean it's gonna go away. There are times where it's like days, weeks. The one time was weeks, and I'm just at a. That's what the hospital gave me was was the opportunity to say, 
use your network, use your tools, get out before it gets that dark. Um, and oh, so I, I tell my therapist all the time now, I have those times, I have those feelings start to happen, but I never, my mind never goes to, I don't want to live. It, it never does anymore? Or it does it, anymore. It hasn't since I got real help. So and you always want to want to live. Whereas eight years ago, for 20 years, my first thing, if anything got hard, if there was conflict of anything, I just kill myself. That's how, that's how nonchalant it you was. You had that thought. All the time. So it was, suicide was your safety net. Yeah. And then I used it so much as a safety net that I actually did it. And right. I didn't tell people every time I'm going to kill myself or I'm, you know, that's not what you do when you, you actually are going to kill yourself. You, you go and do it. Mm -hmm. And that, those were the times that it was the darkest. But there were lots of times where I just thought that would be easier than this because I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to be here. There's nothing. So what was the shift between the first part of your life having yeah. that not wanting to live mm -hmm. and now where at least you always have wanted to live? Yes. I think that the biggest difference is knowing and and being realistic that that's a feeling that's okay. My mind might go there for a split second even now. And then I'm like, "Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa." There's a million other things, you know, that and and I might be as dark as I just want to get away. That's what I usually go to now is like I need to I need to like get away from everybody and I need to isolate, which is a lot better than needing to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've improved. I would say I still go too dark, too, too deep, too quickly mm -hmm. once in a while, but knowing how to pull yourself up and out of that um, and knowing all the tools that I've learned, that's what's changed it is I have tools now. I have kind of a, kind of a checklist I go down and I'm able to figure out before it gets to that point. And if it happens again where I can't get out and it's beyond weeks, I'm going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. it's, too, it's just what I'm going to do mm -hmm. because that worked for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I think a lot of people aren't allowing themselves to realize you can just go and it will, it can't be bad. It's not going to hurt you mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. They can only help. What was the worst part about being at, how long were you in the, the psych ward? Uh, seven days. Seven days. Yeah. What was the worst part? Uh, well, I think the first moment of realizing that I had finally done it, I think being in the gown, giving and, and the hospital socks and then walking in and seeing absolutely a schizophrenic person, the, the, the true, and I say that, and I shouldn't ever say that everybody's mental health is, is equal. Everyone's, everyone's, you know, journey is equal because some are chemically or believed to be chemically induced. Some are chemically helped and, you know, they're different, but they're still mental health issues. Mm -hmm. It's just like saying a broken leg versus a brain tumor, right? So they're different types of medical things, but they all need to go to the hospital and get treated. Mm -hmm. That was like jarring. And I think that's where I just broke down right away. I was like, I can't believe I'm here. I tried to turn around and, and tell them, actually, <laughs> I'm just kidding. What they say? I'm good. They're like, nope. This is you. Kind of committed to this. This is they. They're really good at nudging you, especially a person like who's up. And then I felt, I felt bad at first. You know, like I had that horrible feeling. Like I can't believe I took a space in this place when there are people over here. You know, then there's the pleasing. empathy people pleasing. You gotta please. Yeah, wow. I couldn't possibly give myself attention. And I wouldn't say that I didn't. I wanted to leave. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to leave every day. Yeah. And it's a the foods horrible and the you know and you're in a cold cell block it very much feels like what I imagine prison to be like yeah. um, isolated but then group sessions with the people that needed so much help and and then realizing and allowing myself to realize I needed so much help what was the best part about those seven days in a psych ward best part was the end was realizing that I had done it that I gave myself and I gave, I had value enough to be there and that I had found I knew I had found a therapist that was already changing my thought process. That was it. That this was worth it. You know, that I actually had a future and that I knew that I could get better. That is what it gave me was real, real hope. What do you like about Dr. Wilson? <laughs> I love his coldness. I think it's so funny. You're the it's only so... person who's ever said I that do. they love the coldness I in love their therapist. Cold. No, I love that he just doesn't care what I say. And he's like, you're wrong or you're right, or this is what this is called. And he's so not there to please me at all. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's there to please anyone. I don't even know what he would be like in a social situation, but in a patient to, to um, therapist, he's perfect because he just gives me answers to the things that I need answers to. He'll stop me when I'm bullshitting or when I'm getting close to it. And I don't even know that I'm doing that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, oh. 
yeah, you're right. Doesn't make any sense. And he's like, no, that's not how that happened. And I'm like, yeah, good. And then so he, he's, he's your, he checks you. He's my no man. Yeah. Yeah. You're no man. Yeah. You have a no therapist. Right? Yeah. 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 He is. And that's, I really love that about him. I don't know if I would like that in life. Yeah. But it's important. I have a, a coworker that I always call my no man too. He maddens me, but at the same time he's necessary. Right. You know, I think you have to have a little bit of everything around you. What would you say to somebody who is who thinks they need to be in a psych ward but is too afraid to go? Go. The only thing that can happen is that you want to leave and then mm-hmm. stay. Mm-hmm. And then once you actually get to leave, I promise it'll be worth it. I don't know somebody who has gone in and said, that was a bad idea. You don't know anyone who says no. that? No. I don't know a lot of people that have been to a psych ward except for the people that I talk to now after the book. Right. Uh, and one of my favorite emails that I got, and I've had hundreds and hundreds of people write me, and one of them, subject line was, Ginger Z saved my life. Mm. And that was the power that I knew it had because she said she has three kids. She has too many responsibilities to go to the hospital to check herself in. And I'm thinking, if you had anything else, that you would not have too many responsibilities if you had brain cancer because right. you would attend to it. Mm-hmm. And she did. And so she said her book, my book, she read that first line and it was just handed to her. She didn't even know who I was. She'd never watched me in her life. And she just said what a blessing it was that she read that line because she told her husband, I have to go. Mm. She went and she did a 10 day stint and she came out and she said, thank you because now my mother or my, my children have a mother. And it was just so emotional for me because it was allowing people to see that the hospital can be the answer. It might not be for everybody, but I think that it would be. It's just people don't try it. You have seen some therapists. Mm -hmm. You talk about having a yes therapist. Mm -hmm. Explain to our viewers what that is and why it might be a no-no. Yeah, it's just like relationships. I think every therapist you need to find someone who is your fit. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, this doesn't mean that they're a bad therapist that might be good for somebody else. I did not need somebody mostly women I saw, and that's again, not a knock to, but what fits with me, they were just regularly, I think they were listening very well and I was able to get a lot out, but I never was driven or or no one ever checked me and mm-hmm. said, well, that doesn't really make sense from what you just said. And I would consistently lie. I was lying to my therapist, which was a problem in the first place, but had yeah. they been attentive and not just saying yes, yes, yes to the next thing, And I'm not saying to like go challenge your therapist and one time tell a lie and the next time don't. Mm -hmm. I just think that they need to be invested in it and they need to, but for me, I needed someone who was a little colder, a little more medical and calculated. And I think that's the therapist I have now. I would never, I would be friends with some of the therapists I had, like girlfriends. Yeah, right. um, Because they would just, they built me up. Yeah, great friend, bad therapist. That's right. And that's what I felt. And now I would never be friends with my therapist, ever. Yeah, too cold and clinical. Yeah. Is it still Dr. Wilson? Yes. It is. Yep, I see him every Tuesday whenever I don't have to travel or whatever. And he... Since I started writing my follow-up book, um, I started writing it. I hadn't been to therapy in a couple of years. And I was like, I had told him that I'd written the book. And he was, he was like, really, we had email correspondence, but that's about it. And then as I'm writing my next book, I'm realizing I'm not over all of this stuff. I, you know, I'm not, and here I am trying to give advice. It was at first going to be for teenagers. And I'm like, what? I did not work through that. I need to see him and I need to learn from him because now it's more of kind of this, it started as a patient teaching um, or a, a therapist teaching a patient about Mm -hmm. some different parts of you know psychology and things and it's fully turned into me going back to therapy like a hundred percent has nothing to do with the book anymore no the book the intent of going back to see him at Uh first was like oh i just need to check in on a couple of things see if i right and then through working through that i'm like oh gosh i should come twice a week yeah i forgot about that closet of garbage i had back there yeah and i'm I'm realizing new ways and, and the skill that i think I've realized in my professional life I have is I am a scientist who takes science of of the atmosphere Mm -hmm. and then breaks it down and teaches people about science. That's my job. Mm -hmm. I think that my skill now has now become a little bit more even in the mental health space of taking the science that this guy is describing to me, giving it an analogy and words that make sense and then communicating it to people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my next place in life, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the next thing I can do is to, to translate, give analogies like the fence that I use in here. um, Those are the things that people probably came up to me the most afterward and said thank you for. That these simple tools that I feel like should be taught in second grade. Absolutely. Because they could learn them because they're that simple. They're that simple. And then do you know how many people have written me and been like, I'm 50 and I've never used that before and thank you for writing that in a book. 
oh my gosh, so when, when that's the easy thing, why can't I do the next thing? And so as I'm trying to figure those out, I'm realizing oh, I'm not over this and he's, he's been helping a lot yeah. in both of the, all those ways. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for new episodes and new series every week. And to access exclusive mental health videos that we only release at medcircle.com, check out the links below.